Hi, Alexander. Uh, we are happy to see you today in Quality Assurance Group. Uh, we are very proud to have you in our team, in our team of professionals. And you made an extremely amazing career. And I think that our members uh, would like to listen more about you and about your experience. And let's start to talk about your journey into quality assurance, how it happened, what was attracted for you. Oh, Mariana, uh, it is a pleasure to be here, and um, I'm glad that I made it, and uh, you qualified me for this amazing uh, membership uh, as a contributor. Um, so, uh, yeah, once again, happy to be here. Um, my quality journey started uh, in my childhood. I was uh, very uh, passionate about finding issues, bugs, problems in my computer, uh, usually when you're a kid, you're mostly playing games. And uh, my first one was, um, which I remember vividly, is Doom. I think all of us uh, did some part in it. And uh, while I was doing my general playing stuff, I found uh, several issues in the game. And that is the time when I was thinking, well, I would love to, to be able to fix them. Um, and uh, while my journey was going through the um, ups and downs, I figured out that uh, my main um, focus would not be the fixing, but finding the issues and helping outline them to the broad audience who can potentially make the fix. So um, that is probably how my journey to quality assurance started and why I moved into that stage. Um, I will be frank, when I was uh, going into the bug fixing phase, my main focus was to actually do the coding. Um, but my life happened to be um, a bit, um, let's say, I don't think um, my coding standards would be the best way to go. So I identified that quality assurance is my way to go. And uh, I love it so much. Yeah, tell me uh, what, uh, how it was, yeah? What was your first job and how you get to, to, to that company? Uh, my first job was, uh, um, if, uh, if we're going from the quality assurance stand, uh, that was yeah. Alex. And uh, in Alex company, they were at that moment hiring people for security testing. Uh, so uh, the project was um, AW, uh, uh, AVG, uh, which is a um, security malware antivirus. And, ah, it was uh, serious at that time. It was years ago, de yes. decades ago, yeah? And it yes. was very serious and progressive project. Uh, yeah, right? Yes, that was my first project. Wow, uh, it's a cool start. <laughs> yes, thank you. So um, I was working, uh, I started up um, in searching work for quality assurance and that was my first kind of a, the interview. And uh, Vitaly Melnik, I remember him very good uh, at that moment. Uh, he was asking me lots of questions in networking uh, in addition to quality assurance. Uh, well, that was my surprise because I was not planning to answer any networking questions and I didn't know networking really good. Um, so um, I was, I passed the exam, let's say so, on English and I passed the exam on quality assurance uh, to some extent, uh, but I did not pass on networking. And he said, well, as I can see, you have the English, you have a quality assurance side, uh, you, uh, you need to learn uh, networking before we can proceed. And how much effort, how much time do you need to learn everything you don't know yet? And I said, okay, like give me the list and uh, I will be ready in a week. So um, you do get the point. So getting ready with networking in a week is a, a bit of a stretch. And I didn't know that at that moment. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> well, I'll do my best. Um, so I took um, all the questions he had, um, I went through, I learned them, 
And uh, it seemed like I understood them at that point. Uh, now I do know that I did not. Well, but <laughs> at that point, but you it wasn't tried it your, wasn't your best, yeah. right? You, you, yeah. you tried to do it. The focus of this job offer was um, that I needed to pass the final review with a client in English. So the final review was in English in 2010. You'll understand that in that time, not all Ukrainians knew English, and it was pretty hard to find someone who would be matching all those criteria at the same time. So yes, I, I know, was kind right. of mm -hmm. a happy guy to get mm -hmm. them. Um, so, and uh, in a week, I was able to learn all the questions, and I passed uh, with a writing star kind of. Uh, one of the first candidates who went through, and uh, that was my first job. Um, yeah. It was pretty amazing. We went to test cases, lots of different questions, different different things to learn. And the guy who was training us, uh, he came from Czech, uh, and uh, he was staying with us about two or three months. And uh, like the the brightest thing we re I remember from his learnings is um, when he came to us first time and he was teaching us how to do the testing, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, he was like, um, yeah, one of our girls was going to um, pass her tests in master's degree. And she said like, uh, I, I, will, I will have to leave like one hour early because I need to do the, the passing of this exam. And he's like, oh, you're passing the exam for master's? Wow, that's so cool. Like, um, I don't have masters, I don't have bachelors, I'm, I'm just ended school. And we're like, what? <laughs> he, he was so surprised, and he was like, okay, and how many of you have masters? And we're like, oh? <laughs> it was such a surprise for him. And um, yeah, that's probably the first time I understood that all the learnings we're doing is not a, well, kind of a old thing to do. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but well, we'll see. Right now, we have a stage where uh, Musk is doing the same. So, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, tell us what were the biggest challenges that you had in your job in the beginning, of course. Yeah, but the biggest. What was hard for you? Or... Do you mm. remember? Usually, so... you know, I I think that our mind uh, doesn't want to remember hard times and it's very healthy but maybe you know it it, it could be helpful for our audience mm -hmm. so uh, probably the most challenging parts were um connected with miscommunication i believe so like not delivering something at, at, at the proper time um so you know sometimes you're going into the project and you cannot i identify oh no you identify there is a risk you talk about this risk to your client or to someone else um and uh when lots of different issues come up at the same time and you have to pick the decision without communication with client that is the problem where um finding the right decision at this particular time frame is a bit harsh and um from our end from my end, um, I was not always picking the right decision. Uh, and I think this is the most challenging part for me. Um, I still learn on this. I still try to identify how to uh, make the right one. Um, but when time comes, I do believe that all of us are not able to pick the right decision at that time. And yeah, I think that it, re <laughs> it requires experience, you know, it, it's very yes. hard when you are starting something and working in some area, it's really very difficult to be able to make quick decisions and especially the right decision. It requires a life experience and professional experience as well. But, yeah, but what are your recommendations? Uh, how What can help our juniors and middle level uh, and even senior key engineers to feel more comfortable with my with decision making in challenging sites all right in challenging time um mm -hmm. i think the most interesting thing here is uh 
well, right now in my job currently, I'm um I have lots of decisions to make and they should be quite fast. Uh, I believe so... you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um because of that, I uh, um came to some kind of a pattern. So um I come to my clients or whoever is kind of owning the business and uh, I ask them questions like uh, what is the priority what is the uh, if this happens how I should behave if this happens what what should mm -hmm. I do? I kind of I'm kind of trying to play the uh, AI training module but with me so um, I'm asking questions in different scenarios and I'm trying to identify okay why here and then this Phase, this would be a priority because I don't get mm -hmm. it. I, I mm -hmm. Then it. you start so, from priorities. Yeah, you are yes. setting priorities first of all. What is the most most important thing in that case? Yes. So mm -hmm. and uh, because we oh, right now as a quality manager, I uh, kind of uh, manage lots of different angles of uh, um, quality assurance project. Uh, mm -hmm. we have different times of environment, different times of shadows. So let's say if uh, we're in the beginning of a spring, like, yeah. Let, like you let, are let, managing let's, let's, a lot of, yeah, sorry for, sorry for interrupting you, yeah. but you are managing a lot of offices in the world. It's not about one office, right? Well, I'm not managing them. Literally, I'm kind of delegating the work over. Uh, they have but still, you are system. responsible as well for a successful result. Uh, well, yeah, I'm kind of controlling uh, what what came, comes in and uh, mm -hmm. controlling the risks. If something happens, that uh, how we can shift it over, delegate it over, or how we can shift our shadow to accommodate for the risk, or like all of this stuff is uh, the decision making I need to do. Are you a decision making person? Well, yes, to most of it right mm -hmm. um still i sometimes come over to my clients and ask some questions like in this phase i'm making the decision is that the right one or i'm missing something and um but it's the right way to approach this um so what i'm bringing in is um, um when we are trying to identify how you should be paid you should always come to your manager and uh, ask him different questions of uh, different environment, different setting. Like you're doing the quality assurance part, but uh, not for the product, but for the management side of it. So, um, and when you catch all the questions, uh, let's say we're in the beginning of a sprint and um, some critical developers are not coming. And um, this, I have to identify which of these uh, project uh, functionalities will be delivered. Uh, in which time frame, uh, which one should I choose and why should I choose them? And uh, so all of these questions you need to come up with your manager to identify and go with uh, the decision-making past, uh, not to wait for his decision at that point of time. Uh, that's a very interesting part and uh, it's new to me, completely new. Uh, usually when you're working in offshore, you're working as, a, well, I don't know what to do here. And you're just passing this question over to uh, the client with mm -hmm. like, well, I would potentially go this way or this way, right? You're suggesting the answers, but you're not doing the, um, uh, you're not uh, making the risk on your own. You're not owning the decision, right? Uh, in my current position, I'm owning the decision and I take all the risk. So if something happens, then it's on me uh, that I didn't communicate well or didn't do something well or mm -hmm. something happened. So um, it's a completely new kind of job from this end. You have a serious position. Yeah, okay. Let's go, yeah. let's go to the, the next part of our uh, discussion of your experience. And... Uh, Tell us, and it's important again for key engineers, uh, how do you stay updated with the latest trends and technologies in quality assurance? In mm. nowadays, in now in today, it's really very hard as technologies are growing so fast 
and our daily routine is present as, as we used to and how to find time and how to be really updated. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I tend to read a lot of articles in uh, a medium and uh, in some other resources. Um, I try though, uh, but it, it seems though um, right now is more focused on the um, uh, military side of things and some results of um, Russian-Ukrainian war. Um, so um, the medium works for me right now and uh, some video courses like the YouTube channels are very good ones to catch up on the new trends. At the same time, I'm uh, uh, checking out the new books uh, coming out um, by different authors on quality assurance. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes those are can be considered as an article more like than a book, uh, but still that helps a lot. And uh, the last one, and uh, probably the most prominent one, is conference uh, meetings. So going for any conferences on quality assurance standards and uh, new improvements, new ways, and so on and so forth, uh, that I believe is the most prominent way to do. Uh, maybe that is the reason why I created that um, IT community in um, LA, uh, which is um, gathering all uh, specialists, like Ukrainian specialists, uh, in one place uh, where we can share knowledge. So um, we had about um, 10 meetings, I believe. Uh, oh, you can call it a meeting, more like a small conference, um, because uh, usually in each of the meetings, we had at least two speakers, uh, two presentations, and uh, a discussion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, that's why I believe that conferences are very helpful uh, to catch up on the new strategies, new technologies, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. Okay, and then could you share a project that significantly impacted your professional growth? Mm -hmm. I think each project kind of did a big impact on my growth. Um, it just depends on what exactly was, uh, was the impact. Um, I would say that um the main change for me as a QA manager PM kind of role uh, was when I was working in Alpha software. Um before uh, working as a, before I worked as more like a, yes offshore kind of guy. And um, when I was working in Alpha, I felt like I'm responsible for all quality assurance well that was definitely stated by the position because i was a qa director at that moment and i was responsible for all quality assurance uh, efforts of, of the company um but usually it's uh, um in this case it was ownership as a company which is on site and uh, mm -hmm. where you're managing it all and uh, the feeling was a almost like what I'm feeling right now when you're owning some process and you need to decide, you may need to change everything on the fly and uh, identify the risks, right? Um, so, and there is no one else around you who can help you out to identify how you should go. You're the only sole responsible ownership of, of this project. So um, the reason why I'm bringing this in is... Um, the challenge was not in uh, the amount of people I was managing, but the amount of projects which were under those people. So we were managing about um, 15 to 20 projects, different projects, and each of them had its own specifics, each, each their own uh, methodology, their own problems and risks. So I had to create a hierarchy of each of the projects, which problems are there, uh, who is managing them. Then I had to create a um, psychological profile of each of the quality assurance guys who were working on these projects to identify how I can shift them over to a different uh, project if I need them. And uh, when I was identifying a new person to hire, I was... Um, 
um, usually profiling them for the project needs in um, in this area. Like, how would this person fit in the team first, then uh, the company second, and the third is his technical skills. So his technical skills were the first, not the third, not the second. Yes, and um, um, that is when I uh, presented the concept of um, uh, soft skills first. Uh, it was 2016, if I remember correctly, or something somewhere there, a year. So when we were mostly focused on technical skills, and I shifted my focus exclusively on soft skills, because they played much bigger role in my um, communication and picking the person and uh, how he fit in, in the project than knowledge of all technologies of the world. So that was probably my place when I understood that uh, not all the things which were agreed on and are and using all the time uh, are right and we need to change them. And eventually, uh, I understood that my focus was right. Um, when I shifted over already to a new project with Global Logic um, uh, content testing, mm -hmm. I was kind of creating the team from scratch and hiring all, all the team members. And eventually, thanks to the process of hiring and the process how we how we created the position and how we um, managed the uh, does this person fit in or doesn't and and so on and so forth and made my work on on the team players. Um, I was able to create a team which had attrition level of three percent. Which wow. is, um, which in the end, um, so we had like three or five different teams, uh, on the same project. Uh, but my team was, um, uh, focused on quite recurring all the time the same event almost. They were doing the content testing, so like playback testing and uh, checking the movies and so on and so forth. It, it's, uh, it, I won't say that's a work where you would like to stay for a long time, right? It, well, it doesn't seem like it. It's almost like uh, running regression tests uh, each day of your time and uh, not wanting to change the position. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't sound very good. Um, but we were able to, um, I can create the position as a focus to uh, movie geeks who love to watch movies all the time who love to do the content all the time and like collect these data for them. So in the end, um, the people who were participating in the project didn't want to leave it uh, as much as they can because they just loved the team. They loved the, even though they were watching all the day, all like lots of different movies and not, not to the end, but to some parts, right? Um, but still, they didn't want to leave the team because they loved what they did and they loved the environment they we built. So that's why the attrition level was very low. And uh, I think this is my kind of the main um, achievement, which happened only because I was an actor at that moment and I found out that this is the focus I want to go with. And you make people feel comfortable. And place yeah. it where they are great this is amazing okay and we have the last one question and what advice do you have for someone starting a career in k mm. um well if the if the person is starting a career right now um, I would definitely go with, um, don't foresee your career in quality assurance as a stable career, which is not to change. Consider it as a stepping stone into your new endeavors and uh, consider learning new things and finding your best spot where you can 
find the ikigai, the ikigai, where you know the term uh, Japanese use it as a place where you work, but you are not exhausted because you do what you love. So, in order to get there, you need some stepping stones, and maybe quality assurance is it, maybe it is not, but consider it as a stepping stone where you will find the place where you prosper. And to do that, okay. you need to learn all the time. Yeah, like learning, learning, and learning. Okay, Alexander, thank you very much for your time, for being thank with you, us. And we are looking forward to see you again and again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one.